Not making this vehicle a runner may not be what a lot of people were hoping for, but we have a lot of really exciting projects in the pipeline that will not disappoint you. And a lot of them are going to be runners as well. This week, we're in the final stage of the build as Daryl and Jesse transfer the turret from the donor vehicle to the restoration project. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. Last episode, Jesse spent a lot of time removing the busted remains of the turret basket. Now he can get to work removing the bolts, turret lock, and traverse. Well, now we can actually get to the turret ring. And look at taking the turret off now. Because before we couldn't really get in there and see what we were doing. No, no. So, so how's, how, how's it look? Can you, it, it you looks, can get all the bolts now? Yeah. What are your first impressions, Jess? Looks rusted. <laughs> it looks rusty. <laughs> it does a bit. No, it looks all right. So we've got the bolts here running around the top. This is the turret lock. Once we've got that off, we can determine um, if there's any movement in the turret race. It's not seized up or anything. If we can move it, then what we'll be able to do is spin it around and take out the bolts holding the race and keeping everything in one piece. The whole unit. The whole unit. Turret ring, turret. turret ring, race, everything. If not, what we'll have to do is we'll have to take the, the actual turret off the race. So it'll be splitting the race apart, which we don't really want to do. We want to see if we can do it in one piece, but... Because we don't know how it all works, hey? Not really, no. So this is the easier way of doing this, so... Just to start with, at least. That's it. Once we've got it apart and, like, out of, like, on the floor, we can work out what we're doing, the next step, but... Yeah, I just need a hammer up. Because it's meshed into that gear, it's just holding it. Yeah. That's what's holding in the uh, spring. This will probably be spring loaded. It's been machined down, so it'd go into a little slot. I think that was it. Oh, that was it. Yeah, real. I'm really banging on. Give it a yank. Uh, you ready? Yep. There we go. There it is. So I'm pretty sure that's the lock. So now that we've got that off, we should be able to spin this, but we've got to make sure that this isn't seized on. So there might be a lock. So I don't know if this is seized. This might be seized on too. Mm -hmm. So we'll give the turret a little bit of a nudge to see if it breaks it free, but yeah, All you can right. only try. It looks like there is two spring-loaded buttons that appear to pinch together and unlock the traverse mechanism. Once free, it swings out to the left on a hinge, but its condition, like every other moving part of the vehicle, is terrible. We'll have a go at freeing them up, but it's likely they're broken or rusted almost completely away. Anything? I feel like it's moved a little bit. Hit your head, oh. Ouch. We make the call to cut into the hinge. As we said in the last episode, if the vehicle was a rare World War II era exhibit, we might take a bit more time with it. But we have a lot of other projects in the pipeline that we're eager to get to. Besides, we can always revisit the project in the future if the demand is there. What? There might be threaded in. The pivot point has a spline and thread and is fused with rust. There's no way we'll be pulling this apart in here. So we'll cut through this one as well. Oh. Oh. 
is heavy. <laughs> you okay? Yep. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we thought. So you've got your gear there. It's very similar to like the grand one that we did. Really? Yep. Similar setup. Really? So there's a gear on the inside in here. All the way around. This gear here meshes in. When you turn that with all the reductions, it turns that and allows you to turn the turret all the way around. So it's as we thought. This is just this just must be. That's just how the casting really is. It's quite thick actually. It'd be, it'd be really heavy this ring. Just looking at it. Traverse mechanisms are rare and really hard to come by. We'll be using this in a future project, no doubt about it. It looks so similar to a uh, grant one. Does have. It's crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. Now the turret is free from the turret ring, all that's left holding it to the race is a few bolts. Hopefully, it'll be in good enough condition for us to use along with the turret traverse mechanism. Yeah. This hatch is a little bit in the way, but again it's badly seized. We'll have a go at knocking it out of the way. Yep, now in. Yeah, it's stuck pretty badly. We'll revisit this one another time. Which one you want to take? That one? like something might still be attached. Where does it look like it's grabbing? Over here somewhere. See how you got gap around to here? Can you see it? So you got gap to there? Yes, it's behind here. Is it another bolt? <laughs> oh no. It's another bolt. It's alright. We'll just oxy cut it out. Ah, there's always one. Hard to tell from the video, but the turret ring, ball bearings, race and other components are in very good condition, apart from a bit of surface rust. The grease has preserved everything nicely, and being under the turret has protected it from the elements. It's alive! It spins. Just needs a bit of a tidy up. Should be good. So we can use this on another project, Daryl? Yeah, yeah, well, we're going to save this. We've got a couple of projects lined up that we... Uh, Need some turret rings, we can't talk about it just yet, but yeah, this will work in with one of them. Oh, we cannot wait to tell you what we have planned. 
The EBR90s have additional aluminium wheels that can be raised and lowered to provide the vehicle with more traction in difficult terrain. We're going to fit these before putting the turret on. Since this is only a cosmetic restoration for now, we won't be freeing these wheel units up. For the time being, we'll weld them to their maximum height. This will be easy to reverse if we ever decide to get it going again. So looking at the way that these wheels interlock and go into each other, you can see there's a left and a right. So one will go that way and the other one will go that way. That's that one? Yeah. And that's, that's that one. That, that's that one there. So we can put that one on first. Yeah. I'm still not tight. Yeah, no, you're all right. Helping out in the orange shirt is Jono. You might have seen him in the background giving Al a hand with his restoration work. He worked for many years in Antarctica in the 1960s as a mechanic and has some incredible stories about his adventures down there. If you'd like to hear some of them on the channel, let us know in the comments. Keep going. Let's go in past here and go up under the lip. You got a creepy crawly on your neck. On your neck. It's on your neck. Oh, it's all right. Come on now. Come here. Side shift back to John R. Frank. Good morning. These wheels are really tricky to line up properly, and the panel isn't helping. So we'll take it off and put it back on once the wheels are in place. I know it seems like it should be easy, but sometimes with these sorts of things, it just takes forever. Daz widens out the holes to hopefully make it a little bit easier to catch the locating pins. Pardon me, did I say locating pins? I meant locating pin. Singular. Hold it there. Just stay there for a second. Got to 
gotta jam a little bit more or? So what are we gonna do, roll it? Roll it to right, me. Yeah, but we've got to push the top in, Johnny, otherwise it won't go in. Here Johnny, just in case grab another one. Is that gone? That's gone. With the rest of the aluminium wheels on, it's finally time to fit the turret. Since this vehicle didn't come with a turret ring, Jesse has welded on some box sections to hold the turret off the hull at the appropriate height. He'll also use these points to weld it in place. We've also put the engine and other spare parts in the hull for safekeeping. After all this amazing progress, this French Panard EBR90 can finally be sent away to be sandblasted, primed and painted. It will then be delivered to the museum and put on display, and then the boys can move on to their next project. But that's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and I'll see you on the next one.